the Queen of Sheba cake. If you are a chocolate fan, this is definitely the cake for you. What I've done already is I took six ounces of semi-sweet chocolate bits, or you can use candy bars, and six ounces of butter, which is one and one half sticks, and I melted them over a warm water bath until it's nice and creamy. To this I'm gonna add just a touch of almond. When you're using almond extract, and this is pure almond extract, you don't want to use a lot because it can be very overpowering. So we're going to mix that in with the chocolate and set that aside for a few minutes to cool a bit because we're going to be adding that chocolate to eggs and if I put it in too quickly, it's going to um, start cooking the eggs. I have four large egg yolks, which I'm going to put in my mixer bowl along with one half cup of regular sugar. And now I'm going to mix this up on the mixer. I'm going to make a little bit of noise. I'm going to mix this on the mixer until it becomes very light and, and very pale yellow. It's just going to take about three or four minutes. Up and scrape down the sides because I can see parts of the sugar. Because there's not a lot of eggs and sugar in here, it, uh, the mixer blade doesn't always get all the way to the bottom. So I gotta help it along. There we go. Now we're going to add to this one half cup of ground almonds and I just took regular blanched almonds that you buy in a bag in the grocery store and I put them in my food processor until they were you know, fine. I'm going to also add one quarter cup of flour, just regular all-purpose flour. Do that a little mix with my mixer blade. And now I'm going to add to that the chocolate mixture with the almond. The smell of chocolate is unbelievable. It's nothing like the smell of chocolate coffee in bread baking. Okay, now we're going to just mix this to blend. And I will have to scrape down the sides one time during the so I make sure that everything is getting blended. Okay. Take it off and scrape down those sides. And by the way, my oven is heating to 375 degrees. I will talk to you about the pan in a minute. Scrape it up from the bottom, make sure everything is getting mixed in well. to deal with the egg whites. Again, another mixing bowl, and this time we're going to use the whip attachment. We're going to use the four egg whites, and to that I'm going to add about an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. That just helps the um, egg whites whip up better. And I'm going to whip these until they become soft peaks. And then I'm going to add a quarter cup of sugar to it and whip it until it's stiff. Take a look at these whites. 
perfect. Now, before I combine these two, let's talk about the pan for just a second. This is an 8-inch spring-form pan. One of these that has that release on it. And I'm going to, even though I don't have to, but I'm going to give myself a little bit of insurance. I'm going to spray the pan. And then I'm going to put on the bottom a round of parchment paper. You can use wax paper if you don't have parchment paper. It works just as well. And it's a lot less expensive. And then I'm going to spray that too. Okay. Now what we need to do is combine the whites and the chocolate. And in order to do this, we're going to only put in a little bit, say a third of the whites to start. And that way, we're going to loosen up the chocolate by giving it a really good mix. And you don't have to be too careful about this. Okay. Now we're going to add the rest of the whites, but now you do have to be careful and fold these in. You don't want to lose all the volume. You just whipped in all that air. Because it's going to make... This cake is almost like a souffle when it comes out of the oven. And one of the things you're going to notice about it when it comes out of the oven is you're going to look at it and say, oh no, it cracked, or it's sinking in the center. Don't worry about it. That's exactly what this cake is going to do, and I'm going to show you how to fix that. So, we now fold these in. You want to make sure that there's no big streaks of white, so you really want to work on this until it's done. It's all folded in. See, I'm spinning my bowl keeping my arm in one position, but spinning the bowl. Take a good look down there. See if there's any more streaks. No, looks pretty good. Now we're going to pour it into the pan. Now we're going to go, we're going to put this in our 375 degree oven for about 40 to 45 minutes. Um, it should, it's a little streak of white, it should um, puff up, look dry on the top. As I said, it may have cracked, that's not a big deal. Take it out and then you have to cool it 100% in the pan. Don't take it out, don't run a knife around it, don't do anything, just leave it until it's totally cool. So, 40 to 45 minutes. Well, here's the Queen of Sheba cake out of the oven. You can see it's still a little jiggly. That's that moussey type uh, uh, texture to it. And it's cracked around the edges. Don't worry about it. It's also going to fall a little bit in the center and you're going to think you spoiled everything, but you haven't. I'll show you how to correct that and how to serve it, because we're going to do a glaze over this. But in the meantime, must cool completely. Don't try to unmold it or you're going to have a big mess all over the counter. So I'm going to put this on my counter and we'll come back when it's totally cool and I'll show you how to finish it off. We're going to finish off on the Queen of Sheba uh, tart, cake, whatever you want to call it. Remember when I took it out of the oven, it was up here. It was domed and cracked. It's still cracked, but it's fallen. Like I said, it's going to fall in the center. It's like a souffle. So, we need to have this flat because you don't want a cake that looks like this. A lot of people would cringe, but this is what you're going to do. While it's still here, in the, in the thing, unmolded, you're going to press down on the edges. And yes, you're going to break some pieces off. That's fine. You don't want to mash it so it's compacted. You just want to get those sides to come down and be even. That's going to be the bottom of the cake anyway. I have a cake round, or you can put it on a plate. Take the bottom off. And peel off that piece of parchment paper or wax paper, whichever you use. 
And see, by pounding down on that, on those sides, now I have a much more even cake. I'm going to put that off to the side and make the glaze. Again, in the water bath, I have in this chop bowl six ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, one stick of butter, four ounces, and one tablespoon of light corn syrup. And I'm melting this until it's smooth, which it just about is. A couple more lumps. And then what we want to do is we want this glaze to be anywhere between 90 and 92 degrees before we put it on the cake. If I were to put this on the cake, it's going to just go running all over the place. So now I've taken it off the heat. I've got my candy thermometer. Turn it on. Again, I want it between 90 and 92 degrees. Right now it is approximately 131 degrees. So I'm going to leave my thermometer in there. And I'm just going to wait until it comes down to 90 or 92 degrees. 15 minutes maybe? I don't know. I gotta figure out how to have this. Okay, here we go. So, I'll be back when it's down to 90 or 92 degrees. Our frosting is at 91 degrees, right between the 90 and 92 that I wanted. It's a little thicker. It's not thick like the kind of frosting you're thinking of. This is more of a glaze. I took the uh, cake off of the uh, cake round and put it on here because I figured some of it's going to run off and this way I can catch it as a plate and I won't have that much of a cleanup later on. So I'm going to put some of this on. And then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for a while to let this glaze set. And that's another reason why to have it on this um, pan. I can, again, you can see how it's falling over. But uh. Now, because this cake had ground almonds in it, and traditionally a Queen of Sheba cake is decorated with almonds, I am going to put some on. Now, normally, um, they're around the sides of the cake. I like almond flavor, but I'm not too crazy about the texture always, so I'm only going to put a few around the edges of the top. Okay, let's just... We have a little bit of this uh, glaze left over. What you can do is uh, cover it with uh, plastic wrap, put it in the refrigerator, and if you want to make cupcakes during the week, it makes great toppings for cupcakes. So I'm going to put a few almonds around the edges and not all around the side. Very nice. Very nice if I do say so myself. So now into the refrigerator to set up and then we can have some of our Queen of Sheba cake. Here's our Queen of Sheba cake all done. I've taken a slice out of it, and you can see how decadently chocolate this is. This is a wonderful cake. I've added a little bit of whipped cream on the side and a few raspberries. Raspberries and chocolate go well together. The whipped cream takes away a little bit of the big richness of the cake. Vanilla ice cream would also be good with this cake. I hope you try this Queen of Sheba cake. It's not difficult to make, and it's a wow.